Good morning everyone. I got a property in Memorial today. It's 1973 so it's a little bit older. So we are expecting to run into some issues. I got some really good finds, some educational finds, and some things to watch out for whenever you're looking at properties. Let's go check it out. Okay, so first walking up to the property, I thought this was three coat stucco, but it's actually EFIS. And how you tell the difference between EFIS and three coat stucco, hard coat stucco, is when you knock on it, it creates this hollow sound. And also, it's really soft to the touch. You can almost indent it. Uh, also, uh, whenever you knock on three coat stucco, it actually hurts your knuckles a little bit, and it, it damn, you know, it, it hurts your knuckles. So, uh, you know, that's how an easy way to tell the difference. EFIS is a, a known product that has deficiencies on it, and uh, it holds moisture very easy. So, it's really not the best for Houston or humid environments. Uh, let's walk you around and show you some of the deficiencies I found with it. Okay, for the first find, uh, with okay, for this next area, you can see the separation between the siding here. Uh, this is an easy find for a home inspector. You can tell there's obviously going to be an area for water penetration, and this is a perfect area for cause and effect. You have a gap in the EFIS siding and the brick uh, on the, right here and we have water penetration right in this closet. So I'll walk you over there and show you that. So right here, this is a combination between water penetration and actually whenever you see the tape twisting like this, this is a previous foundation movement. This house's uh, foundation has been repaired in the past. We don't really see any other structural movement, but this water penetration comes from the top and it goes all the way down uh, to the base of the floor. This is a perfect example of how not to install stucco siding. This is EFIS right here, but this actually belongs with hard coat stucco too. You need a, two, a minimum of two inch clearance from the roof structure. The reason why you need that is that what happens is, is water is always rushing down the roof and you're gonna get this deficiency known as wicking. And what wicking is, is whenever water actually starts to climb up behind the stucco and it starts to create water damage. And it's also been related to no cause mold and damage inside the attic space too as well. So how I know wicking is occurring, you can actually see the discoloration of where the water is actually starting to climb up. The stucco is actually softer at the bottom than it is the top. So we know water is getting behind there. Whenever you see this, you know that you're probably going to have to replace the siding because the damage is there. Once the water gets there, you start to tear up the internal components of it. As a home inspector, I'm always going to just recommend for repair and a stucco specialist to take one of the first things I always like to do is run right to the plumbing stacks or any type of penetration. We know that we have easy area for water penetration. You can see where the seals buckled inward and they used to have some sort of caulking barrier but it's gone. This uh, boot needs to be replaced or it will leak into the attic. My next favorite area is to come in behind the chimney. So this is an easy area for water to start penetrating and whenever you start to see tar here or any type of rusting of the flashing, you know this is a temporary fix. Tar is a temporary fix to a long term problem. So I haven't been in the attic space but I guarantee you I'll probably see some water damage in there when I get up there. So we know that we need to reset and replace the flashing around the chimney. Okay so marks like these, this is actually known to be hail damage. Uh, hail damage doesn't happen too often in the Houston area. You get it more on the north and west side of Texas. Uh, but how I know this is hail, you can see it's almost like a hammer mark, but it's not a full circle. So we know this isn't fake. A full hammer strike will create little perfect round indentions, but you can see this is rigid. So this is a hail mark. Okay, so another area that's almost easy to look over, especially on newer construction, because this nail will be kind of shiny and look like it belongs there, but anything that protrudes a shingle and goes through the flashing, this is an easy spot for water penetration. Water will just come down in here and get behind here and start to rot out the deck and the wood and eventually cause water stains inside your structure. The last thing I want to talk about is actually how the trees are hanging over the roof here. This is actually not a deficiency right now, but this is an easy area where trees will start to dangle and damage the shingles. So you always want to pay attention to this. Trees hanging over the roof isn't always a bad thing because it actually reduces your energy bills from the shade. So uh, let's uh, take a look on the exterior and see what we can find there. Okay, what they did right here is they connected a copper line, probably run into a grill in the front or some sort of flame uh, lamp. 
Copper lines are no longer allowed to be used to transport gas because the material is too soft and it can be easily damaged. Easy area for a gas leak. So we recommend to remove this and cap the gas line. Another easy call out for home inspectors and also easy to replace is actually this vinyl siding. This helps protect the window seal and helps prevent uh, air leaks inside the structure. So if you want to replace this, you can pick this stuff up pretty cheap from any uh, Home Depot store. Okay, so this is a pretty easy call out. Uh, right here above the door, we have a area, easy area for water to get in. They didn't finish putting in the trim properly and you can, and at the base of the door too, you can see it's rotted through, ooh, it's rotted through. Um, another call out with the EFIS siding, the EFIS is resting directly on the base of the, the ground. You need a four to six inch clearance and you can even see the wicking is happening along here too as well. I always think it's funny when I see this, but they removed the clean out cover and they never put it back. So the sink is actually discharging outside. Okay, in the attic space, really good uh, find right here. We have some PEX and PEX water lines and some galvanized. So it looks like they've bypassed some of the galvanized inside the house, so that's a good sign for an older age property knowing that they've done some repair to the plumbing. It's always just good to ask for the plans or the work to see how much was done. All right, the next area, you can obviously tell this HVAC unit is pretty old and it's at the end of its life. Uh, we know that it's running the R22 Freon, so whenever you see R22 Freon, you just wanna coach your client or let the client know that you have a system that's probably going to be need to be replaced if any work needs to be done on it. Uh, you can also see this pan is out of place. There's no secondary drain line. We have some air leaks and then the front door of the furnace is off. I mean there's several deficiencies with this one. We know we need an HVAC technician to come in and bring it up to par. The next thing I always like to do is follow the ductwork. Uh, you can see right here in the corner the ductwork is actually looks like someone stepped on it or it's been crushed at one point in time and you're actually cooling the the attic space right here so we know we need a hvac technician technician for the furnace and the the cooling cooling system and also while he's here we'll have him take a look at the ducts and let's hope they can probably uh, repair these but uh, with it being so old any most hvac technicians will recommend for replacement Okay, I always like to start inspecting the flue from the top down and you can see right here that flue is actually touching that wood siding there and that is a fire hazard. All flues need a one inch clearance from anything combustible. Okay, so we'll finish with some of the deficiencies here in the garage and then we'll come back and do a final review. So, all right here we have some patches on the uh, ground inside the garage area. Uh, these patches again just shows you that there's been some previous work done and you don't want to stress about that. The next area is we're going to hit the water heater. So we notice we have the PEX water lines over here too as well. So they might have uh, replaced the PEX throughout the whole structure. So that's a good sign. Uh, you have probably dissimilar metals here, uh, which you do. You need a dielectric fitting between these two uh, connections. So we'll come down and we'll look at it. We'll have to look up the Bradford White on their website because you can't really pull it off very well. But normally it's within four years of this Annis number, this 2006. So it could be like a 2008. It's just a guess though. Uh, the final area is you know you, you have a, it's in the garage so it's 18 inches off the ground which is good, but there's no pan. Uh, some people question this because the pan, uh, not in place, it's in the garage, but the way the rule is written is anywhere that it could cause damage. So if water rolled off, it could easily cause damage to this wall right here. So we recommend for a pan to be installed. Overall, the water heater doesn't look too bad. Uh, just, and even if they didn't install the pan, uh, no one's gonna really die from it. So um, let's uh, go to the truck and do the final review. So overall review, we have some good things and some bad things. Uh, the good things are the foundation's been repaired, so we know that there's some sort of warranty on it. Also, the next good thing is the galvanized water lines have been replaced too as well. So with the galvanized water lines being replaced with PEX throughout the structure, it looks like, that means that it's less work for them down the line. Uh, we have copper wiring for 1973. That's like the prime year for, for aluminum. So we know we have copper wiring the structure. 
negative things. We're looking at a new roof probably. Maybe we could get the insurance involved because we have some hail damage, but it's unlikely with that type with that minimum of hail damage. The other negative thing is the big one is the EFIS siding. With the EFIS and siding installed like that, it's probably just best to replace it. But uh, we'll let them try to negotiate that between a stucco specialist and they'll go from there. And then the final thing was we had three HVAC units, only one of them has been replaced. So we know two of them are at pretty close to the end of their life and we they're gonna have to start to work that into their budget. I'd say this property, since it's an estate sale, I'd say it's right there in the middle. I mean, it's not like too extreme. We have some work done, it's older. So it's some stuff that they, as an investor, or they're moving in and they have a budget to fix things. This is a not too bad of a property if they knew they were expecting problems on an older age home whenever they put in this offer. So that's Chris with A-Action. If you have any home inspection questions, please give us a call and please like and share the videos.